Despite all the rumblings north of the border by the SNP and the cronies, Scottish independence is no longer viable. Basically, it's not been, it's not really been properly viable since the 1960s, if I'm being honest about it. But in my opinion, it is now actually impossible. And so that's what I'm looking at in today's soapbox. Okay, so I'll just start with this uh, insert. I did a take where I basically I felt I rambled on too much, so I'll try to be give a concise summary up the front. Then if you want to hear my fuller explanation and opinions, then you can f feel free to watch the rest of the video. Um, to cut a long story short, what I'm basically driving at is the SNP, the Scottish National Party, are not interested in what's best for the Scottish people. They are only interested in what's right for them and their legacy. They want to have their picture in the history books alongside William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and then independence was once again achieved thanks to these good old people at the SNP. That's what they're interested in, and they're perfectly prepared to actually tank the country in order to actually just simply have their, their name in history. Okay, and the infographic I've got here, obviously, um, the, if you watch the video, then I'll be going into each point in more depth. But um, I've split it into three columns. So there's the Brexit roadmap on the left, which is my best estimate of the projection of what will happen uh, for like, like with Brexit. And in the centre, we've got the best case scenario for the SNP in the Scottish Independence Roadmap and on the right is why I believe it will not happen. Now, the main thing I should say perhaps about the Brexit Roadmap is there is an, a scope for the time period to be extended. So uh, let's say best case scenario, they've been making progress with talks for the two year period, it gets extended for another year. Then that might give us a, up until 2020. The, the biggest single problem that uh, the SNP have is if they want their plan to actually work, then they've got far too much to do in the time period in between when Article 50 is triggered and the, the British negotiations with the, with the EU start and they're, they're, they're going to have to get themselves independent and negotiate their own deal with the EU all before Brexit finally happens and there's just far too much work to do there that's why they so, so they cannot actually it's impossible for them to for them to get all that done in that in that time period so the if we're being realistic about it, if they win the independence uh, referendum, we're still talking about them being outside both the UK and the EU. And if they want to be part of the EU, then they're going to have to apply as a new country and the automatic conditions that that uh, <laughs> uh, entails. And that is why I, another reason why I, I believe it, that independence is now impossible. Now, on the right-hand column, you'll see, uh, you, you know, um, obviously, you can either freeze-frame the screen or, um, or, or, or if, you, if you fancy watching the entire video, great. Um, now, I've tried to summarise why I believe that it, that, that it won't happen. Um, now, the British Prime Minister, I believe that she will give them permission if they ask, but she's within her right to actually just simply turn them down. So there is the potential for it to be scuppered right at the start. But if it gets turned down, that will completely enrage the, the, the Scottish population. So uh, that's why I think that, that um, simply give them the right to the referendum, then win the argument uh, in, in the campaign. Um, okay, uh, I did an infographic uh, as well, which... Uh, this was done a few months ago, but the points in it still stand. 
Um, that you know, there's there's pros and cons to everything, but um, there are there are just too many cons. There are just too many cons for uh, an independent Scotland to actually keep its head above water. So no matter how romantic your notions are about there being, like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome? You know, it's it's uh, Scotland is too small. Uh, it basically, it's too small in this in this global uh, global wor globalized world now. See, because UK is still going to be relatively small on its own, but is big enough to be able to handle it. Scotland cannot actually do it on its own. It's as simple as that. So no matter the polemic, no matter how, how, how many times you watch Braveheart and, and you get that romantic, warm feeling in your gut and you want to stick it to those bastard English, that doesn't change the facts. And the facts tell us that it's impossible for there to be a successful independent Scotland. Okay, I'll insert this part up at the front end of the video. And like I say, feel free to watch the rest of the video if you want me to go into uh, these points um, in, in a bit more depth. All right, cheers. You see, the thing you've got to understand about the SNP is they're more interested in their legacy. They're, they want their names up there in lights beside Robert the Bruce and William Wallace. They're more interested in that than they are in actually what's best for the nation and peoples of Scotland. Now, um, if we look at the actual Brexit roadmap, uh, because obviously this is uh, all coming to a head thanks to Brexit. And so here on the left, I, I have my Brexit roadmap. In the centre is the best possible um, best case scenario for the SNP's independence roadmap. And on the right hand side, I've got why I believe it just simply won't happen. Um, because, like I'm saying, the situation now is it's now completely unviable. It would be condemning Scotland to its own self-implosion, its own destruction. And the Scottish people themselves should be able to see through the SNP polemic that would actually take them to that position. Now, if we just briefly go through Brexit, uh, and, uh, you know, still so just take it in turn. Um, okay, so June last year, there was a Brexit referendum, as everybody knows, uh, the actual majority of the votes uh, were to leave the European Union. So, 52%, yes, um, quite, quite close, but a win is a win. It was first past the post, so... It's painful for the losers to to, to be cl a close a close runner up, but uh, a winner was established, and the winners were the Brexiteers saying to leave the EU. Okay, so it's estimated that in March of this year, March 2017, that the British Prime Minister will do a trigger Article 50. And that's just, that's just the clause of the European Union agreements uh, that will enable the United Kingdom to to, to, to leave the European Union. So uh, once Article 50 has been triggered, according to the terms that the EU dictate, then you will have a maximum of two years to negotiate and even if you do not have an agreement reached by the end of the two years, the, your, your arrangement with the EU will terminate. Technically speaking, they could agree to extend the time uh, if, if they feel negotiations could actually result in something, um, but that's up to them to decide. Okay, so let's say like two years, but like again, this is a bit of a best case scenario for for this as well, you know. So so the terms of Article Fifty, twenty nineteen. Right, so from twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen, you know the the two years. Um. You know, so that's the maximum period. 
experts reckon that um, it could take up to 10 years if we're talking about uh, proper negotiations to um, dot every I and cross every T, so to speak. But it's got to be done in two years, <laughs> I, I, you know, irrespective of if, if, it sh if, if it theoretically should take 10. So that's increasing the chance of a hard Brexit. Uh, in other words, no, no agreement, just walking the fuck out and just going with the, the WTO rules. Okay, now what ha what would then happen in 2019 is the, whatever deal is actually agreed, then that deal would be presented to uh, all the parliaments. So so it would be to the UK Parliament and to the EU Parliament. Now the EU Parliament, what what would happen there is the representatives of each country would then have to go back to the countries. So so that that would be like the 27 countries. And all 27 countries would then have to give it the thumbs up. Um, so the probability of, of this being a, 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 like, like a deal being made are pretty remote, if I'm being honest about it. Um, but let's, let's, say, let's, let's say best case scenario, you know, it's, um, it's, it's either a case of the, the deal will be accepted or rejected. So... If all the sides uh, involved agree with it to the terms, then the the treaty will be signed and the United Kingdom will leave the the, the European Union. If either side votes to reject the terms, the United Kingdom will still leave, uh, but instead of uh, with a negotiated deal, it will be according to the standard uh, World Trade Organization terms. Now, like, like we're saying, that's... Um, two years in which that can be done. Um, so, so let's say there's a bit of an extension, three years maximum, say. Three years maximum would take us to 2020. Okay, now, if we go to the roadmap for the SNP, so Scottish Independence, then what we're looking at is Right, the very day, uh, the very next day after the result came in to to leave the EU, the SNP declared their intent uh, to hold a second independence referendum. It's quite a long story short. It's it's basically because they are unwilling to accept that the UK public have disagreed with them about the EU, and so they're wanting to be. Oh yes, but the Scottish people, the Scottish people, and it's like yes, uh, the referendum was. All the people of the United Kingdom, it was you know it was it was not um, there, there there was not any separation by country, and I won't I will I'll, I'll not bother going into the intricacies of the technicalities of yes Scotland still being a country but part of the United Kingdom, because it's, in in all practical terms, it's really just like a, a region of the United Kingdom. You know what I mean? It's like they they do not have their own embassies. They do not have their own army. Uh, you know they've got limited powers. Uh, and 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 so. Well, no, no. Let's let's not get sidetracked with that. Let's not get sidetracked with that. Okay. So, assuming that uh, Article Fifty is triggered in March of this year, March twenty seventeen then the SNP uh, have declared their intent to seek permission from the British Prime Minister to run a second Scottish independence referendum. Yes, they need to actually ask permission to do that. So, if, if, we, if, we, if we glance over to the right-hand column here, it's like, so, so why it won't happen? Right, so, well, that's the thing, they, they, they need to ask permission. Uh, all it would take is, is the British Prime Minister to just simply refuse permission, and it's all game over before it even starts. Yeah, um, or uh, the, the the British Prime Minister could kick it, kick it into the long grass. You know, she could maybe say something like, um, "Sure, we'll consider the proposal, but we're a bit busy right now sorting up Brexit." You know, you know, it's like so. So we'll come back to you once we've got that sorted. Thank you very much. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, the SNP could do about that. So. Uh, are, one of the things, that, one of the big things that the SNP have really been trying to put pressure on is they're saying they could become an independent country, 
separate from the United Kingdom and still be part of you know, and, and have no need to actually join the European Union because they're already part of the European Union. But of course, that's um, the United Kingdom is part of the, the, the EU, Scotland isn't. You know, Scotland's only part of the EU as long as it's part of the UK. But but um, but if we talk, if we're talking about what the SNP say they want to happen, then that's what we're that's what we're about to look at. Um, so in order for, so in order to remain as part of the EU while avoiding the need to apply for membership as a new country, all the following must be achieved by the SNP before the United Kingdom leaves the EU in 2019 or 2020, you know, or thereabouts. So, the actual independence referendum, they'll need to agree the question that's going to be on the ballot paper. They need to agree the timetable of what period of time for the, for the yes and no campaigns to actually campaign, and the date of the ballot at the end of that, of course. Then they would actually need to hold uh, the independence referendum and win it. So you know, obviously they need to actually win that, uh, or or again, it's, it's it's a back to square one. And once they've actually won it, then they need to negotiate terms to sever Scotland's three hundred year old union with the rest of the United Kingdom. And negotiate terms with the European Union that are acceptable to all sides. So if we glance back to the left-hand column, like the 2019, you'll notice that um, experts have suggested that for the 40-year period that um, the United Kingdom has been part of the EEC, the, the, the European Economic Community, that they, they they say that that, that that could take ten years. And Scotland's relationship with the rest of the UK is three hundred years. And it's you know and it's much more intertwined than the United Kingdom's relationship with with, with the EU. And they they would have to negotiate terms to actually get that sorted out in less time than the UK can actually um, come to terms with the EU. And then, on top of that, they also then need to do the negotiations with the EU as well. And the EU would have to, of course, be on board with that. And if they can get all of that done before 2019, 2020, then you've got the possibility of Scotland living happily ever after as a region of the United States of Europe, basically. So, why I think that's well, well, the sheer the sheer amount of work that has to go into that uh, in such a short period of time, I'd say that's that's pretty much impossible. See, so if that's impossible, um, then. The, the Scotland would not be able to become an independent country and still automatically be part of the, the European Union. Now, if we to take a look to the, the right-hand column, if we assume that the referendum does happen, I, 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 you, know, you know, it's like, it's like for instance, like we say, if the Brit, Brit, it's, let's say the, the, the Prime Minister actually gives permission for the referendum to take place. After all, um, the Prime Minister would would probably want to be seen to be uh, being being reasonable about things. So, so, so I, I could actually see see that being the permission being granted. Um, so what would need to happen is the SNP would need to convince the Scottish citizens that an independent Scotland can handle financial requirements of independence, which incidentally it can't. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that af after I finish with this page. Now if you're th talking about the members of the European Union uh, that would also have to agree to this, um, like like I'm saying, it's like uh, I mean, you know, so if the referendum, if, say the SNP win the referendum and and they're saying right, we're going to become independent, 
then if they're wanting to remain part of the EU, they also need to convince other members that are already established proper countries, so to speak, uh, of the, the EU that it would be a great idea for Scotland to join. And so the example I've got here, which is the most obvious example, really is uh, the need to convince Spain uh, to avoid using their veto of Scotland joining the EU uh, because, because Spain have promised to actually do that basically because Spain have had um, years of trouble including terrorism uh, from Basque separatists you know so 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 people from the Basque country in in, in northern Spain um, they've you know they've been pushing for independence for for decades um, uh, you know, and they, and they declared a ceasefire not not too long after the IRA um, declared a ceasefire in Ireland. Um, and so, because they don't want the Basque country, you know, the people there getting ideas of voting for independence themselves, then the last thing they're going to do is support Scotland in uh, like, like like the ability to actually stay in the EU. Um, so, so I, I, again, it's another scenario, the same way that people talk about Brexit, like you cannot have your cake and eat it, then Spain would be making damn sure that Scotland is not going to have its cake and eat it if it goes independent. You know, it's like, sure, if you go independent, you're not going to be part of the EU because you're not part of the UK, and it's UK that's recognised. Um, you, you know, they do not rec recognise Scotland as a separate country in the, in the EU. You know, you're, you're dis despite the, the traditions... Um, and the conventions in the, within uh, Great Britain, um, the EU don't don't recognise that. They recognise the United Kingdom as the country, um, and so they would be saying, "Ah, but, but but you're a new country, so you have to apply as a new country." And of course, um, I'll come onto that soon. That um, why Scotland do not want to do that. Well, basically because they they will not meet the criteria. Is is, is the long and short of it. Uh, that's, so that's why they're desperate to actually be saying, but we are already part of the EU, so we shall continue as part of the EU, because they would never meet the, the entry criteria. Um, and, the, and there are also other uh, EU member states that have indicated um, like disapproval uh, of countries being able to get um, EU status particularly easily, and what Scotland are asking for is, well, 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 well <laughs> it's, it, it's like I'm saying to cut a long story short, it's like the EU are not interested in Scotland on their own. Scotland would become a financial burden, whereas the UK were at least contributing more than they were taking out. Plus, so, so that would be yet another country that's looking for handouts more than they could actually contribute. And, um, and that's at, at the same time that the UK are going to be stopping making their contributions to, to, to the EU, so they're going to have even less money to actually divvy out to everybody. Um, okay, okay, right. Um, so if we look at um, the, the last point for this page, really, um, if Scotland fails to meet all of the above, uh, you, you know, so, so, so um, in, in, in other words, um, if Scotland cannot um, get the right to call itself a, a current member of the EU, then they will need to apply as a new country. And the terms that are very clear in the EU is that um, you have to accept the euro as uh, the currency if you're, a, if you're a new country joining. Now, there are, there are customised... Um, deals that have been made where it's where there's perhaps transition periods um, so, so there's a couple of countries um, that are currently in like like what would be what you would maybe consider a transitional period so 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 they're they're getting access to the market but they're, they've not adopted the euro yet but they've got something like two years to to, to get their arse in gear and, and and get the euro in circulation in their country um, what they would have to do, oh, this this point, I'll, I'll well, I'll touch on this point again later, but um, it's, it's it's worth saying now and repeating later. So Scotland would need to get its deficit in line with uh, the acceptable EU levels. 
Now, what that means basically is the EU says that your deficit has to be no more than 3% of your GDP, right? Um, and Scotland currently has a GDP deficit of 10%, not 3%, 10%. So in order to actually get the economy in line to be something that's acceptable, that, that would make allow the membership of, of the EU, we're talking about austerity um, that would be on a par with Greece, that they would have to impose to actually get, get that 10% down to 3%. And that would shrink the economy. You know, it's a vicious circle. It's a vicious circle that, that, that's a downward spiral. And then, of course, um, just, just, just in general terms, um, negotiating terms with the EU uh, that are acceptable to all sides. And, well, well like, like I was saying about Spain, a couple of, I mean, a couple of other states, um, they they're just not in, not interested in Scotland being um an independent country that's a member of of of, of the EU club um you know you know the, the they all they only want people that will benefit them and they do not see Scotland benefiting them um I don't know what did I, what did I say over here right if I look at the right column for this um yeah Scotland can no longer survive as a fully independent nation if outside both the UK and the EU. So, if Scotland votes to go independent, you know, don't, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a possibility that, that, that they could actually vote for independence. Total madness if it happened. Um, they would end up being outside the UK, but they would also end up being outside the EU as well. And they need to be part of something bigger. They cannot actually handle it on their own uh, and let's say that they that they actually managed to wangle um, being a member of the EU how are they going to fare um, the EU is looking quite close to collapse in the next couple of years um, how are they going to handle handle things when the EU collapses you, you know it's like don't get me wrong it's like Great Britain with or without Scotland, would be seriously hurt uh, with, the, with the collapse of the EU. But at least, but at least, um, we, I'm saying we because I'm uh, because I live in London now. Uh, but uh, but I've got lots of relatives, obviously, still in Scotland. Um, and I certainly cannot afford to be bailing them all out. <laughs> you know, so so I do have a vested interest in. <laughs> in the madness not taking place but um but 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 you know you know but but um the rest of of the of the uk they would at least be able to survive you know they they, they would take a severe knock but if the eu collapsed they would they would at least survive uh, the the people that are in the eurozone they're going to be fucked they're going to be seriously fucked you know you know it's like it's like we 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 we, we People keep referring to like 1930s Europe, you know, you know, like when they're talking like Donald Trump and stuff, because they're trying to invoke the um, uh, the fascists and the Nazis when they're saying that. Well, the actual living conditions <laughs> that 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 people in the eurozone will end up. Ha um, well, well, we can look we can look to Greece again, and this is before we even mention the migrants that they're bringing in, and then then how are the migrants going to be? When there's no money for them, there's no money for the for the for for the the, the traditional citizens. What well, what we we'll say the indigenous Europeans. As um, you know, it's a, I, I know that's a contentious phrase in itself, but um, so 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 there's going to be civil wars right across Europe. Because they're all going to be fighting for crumbs. Uh, if the EU collapses, and so what's Scotland going to do? They're going to be knocking on England's door, saying, bail us out, please, just like you did in 1700. Yeah, people don't like to remember that one, do they? It's, um, <laughs> they, you know, it's like, uh, okay, I'm, 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 I'm oversimplifying things, but, um, um, but Scotland were gen jealous of the, of, the, of, of, of the English and decided to, to, to like, forge an empire of their own in Panama. 
And so, yes, I know it was like it was private money and it was a private venture, but it still, but it still bankrupted the country. <laughs> uh, um, and so it was England to build them out, and then that's that's effectively the main reason uh, why um, why Great Britain was kind of formed. Really, uh, it was because Scotsmen went on a went on a venture and lost all their money, and then went with a begging bowl to England. And the thing that made Scotland great, as far as like the Enlightenment and stuff like that, it was the Anglification. Of 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 central Scotland, that's what did it, not um, not because of any traditional fucking Gaelic anything. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm that's like I'm proud of the the old stories and and it's uh well when I, when I was at school it was um used to love the history lessons and the history lessons were telling us all about the battles where we like killed the English. <laughs> so so for years I used to be um. I used to be like screaming for independence, you know. You know, it's like the injustice of us being part of, of uh, Great Britain being ruled from London. How dare they do this to us? Um, and it, it it was a bitter pill to swallow when I actually realised the truth of the matter. And the problem with the SNP and their supporters is they're still in fantasy land. They're still thinking the way I used to think. They are still looking at things like Braveheart and getting this warm feeling in the in, in, in the stomach, and then saying yes, let's go out and fucking take this country back. Except, <laughs> the country is is um the problems that uh hang on let's see this, this is an infographic I did uh, I was originally circulating it in Twitter, and I was kind of trolling some of the SNP supporters with it. With it. Um, no, no. This this was it was actually a few months back that I did this, but but the points still stand. Um, because, like I say, um, there's just no way. There's just no way Scotland is going to be able to establish itself as an independent nation, come to terms, in order to like like with with the rest of the UK, in order to know where they stand in order to start negotiating with the EU and get that all sorted before Brexit has been sorted. Because their only chance of actually being a member of the EU as an independent nation is if they can agree terms before the United Kingdom itself has actually separated from the EU. And, uh, and like I'm saying, that's impossible. So we're really talking about them negotiating from the outside as a new country uh, wanting to join the EU. So that's the basis for what for what I'm saying with this infographic. Um, because here it's like, the so the euro currency is mandatory when joining the EU as a new country. And the EU have already confirmed that Scotland cannot stay in alone post Brexit. You know, it's like the part you know part of the United Kingdom. So when the United Kingdom goes, Scotland is part of the United Kingdom, it's going with it. So Scotland is going to need to apply to join the EU as a new country. And if they're if they're deciding actually to not join the EU, well that's not SNP policy, but if they decide to do that, then they would have to actually re-establish their own currency again. Or piggyback on some other currency, you know, like use US dollars. You know, so or, or or the British pound. You know, so um, now, if they're going to insist on being independent, why should the rest of the United Kingdom, Kingdom be nice to them? Obviously, I would. If that happened, then like I'm saying, I've got. You know, like most of my family's still in Scotland. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not wanting to see them getting shafted. So that's why I'm not wanting this to happen. But if. If they're being such agitating cunts, and I'm talking SNP and you know, you know, like an independence movement, then 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 why on earth would they expect England and the rest of Britain to actually be nice to them? So why would they keep, keep you know, do everything in their favour? They see that this is a parallel of the exact same arguments that people are saying about Europe. Why why would Europe be nice to United Kingdom if United Kingdom's deciding to go go it alone? And it's like excellent point. 
And the exact same point uh, applies to Scotland if they were to go independent of the, of the UK. Um, so if there was like a, um, a hard border established between Scotland and England, you know, rebuild Hadrian's Wall or however you want to call it, um, then you're talking, I'm not sure what, what the figure is, I think it's something like 65% or, or possibly even higher of Scottish exports go to England. And we're talking something between 12 and 15% actually go to the European Union. So to go independent and seek um, membership of the EU, uh, they're not actually playing to the strongest market. Also, all SNP projections have always been based on high oil prices. Um, I think their last, I, uh, I think that I think I think I think the last business plan, if we call it a business plan, uh, they 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 had put down. Well, how's about if oil is one hundred and thirteen pound, you know, one hundred thirteen dollars a barrel? And it's like, well, it's not that though, is it? It's fifty three dollars a barrel uh, uh, as as of this week. So. That's that. That's not going to help your deficit situation, now, is it? Not to mention, uh, no. That no. I must admit, this is now dated because, like I say, this is this is um uh, a, f a few months ago that I actually that I actually did this information. Uh, but um, Sh Shetland, um, technically, if we're talking about like the the oil fields, you know, it's like oh yeah, and that's in Scotland's water and that. Well, Shetland. Have have declared that they would actually prefer to self-govern rather than be part of an independent Scotland, and if they did that, then the Clare oil field uh, would then come under Shetland waters as opposed to Scottish waters, and then that not only would they have cheap oil prices to worry about, but the actual ability to produce oil would be decimated as well because it would come under. A self-governing Shetland, and how can they say they're not allowed? You know, they wouldn't allow it because all Shetland need to do is is they they ask permission, <laughs> just the exact same way Scotland has, to 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 um to Westminster, and if Westminster want to shaft you, they give you a hard border, and then they give Shetland permission. And like I was saying, the uh, unsustainable economy. Uh, it would result in austerity on a par with Greece, and that that would be imposed by the EU just to meet the entry criteria. And the Scottish people don't deserve to be treated like that, I don't think. Oh, obviously, I'm ever so slightly biased in that regard. Um, and I don't think they are stupid enough to to vote for something that would put them in that position. That's why I'm saying. Um, Scottish independence is now impossible. Uh, also, if there, there's no guarantee of them actually fall, coming under NATO protection unless they're prepared to, to meet the criteria for joining NATO. Now, in, in reality, I, I don't see that as being a, a real issue. You know, but, but, it's, but it's technically, it's still, it's still one of the things that have to be tagged onto the agenda. You know, some, anything else to discuss? Oh, yes, our actual protection. Then, if they're no longer part of Britain, the British military bases and um, would 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 be removed, and so the need for personnel would go. That would resu result in job losses. British government departments would 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 be removed. More job losses. Um, why would uh, the British government contracts go to any Scottish companies that anymore? You know, just 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 like assign them to Eng to English ones instead, even more job losses. No, obviously it's like there there are things that could actually replace uh, these job losses. You know, because they would need like their own border control. The, the, you know, they would need they would need to establish their own embassies. Uh, so so um, you know you know they they would, they would need to um, uh, build up their own army as they saw fit. And so there would certainly be jobs uh, being created as well. You know, so it wouldn't just be all these job losses. That you know, there'd certainly be some jobs to replace them. But 
it all comes with a price. And there's a, a £15 billion pound black hole that the SNP just cannot fill. They just cannot fill it. And even if they impose austerity, I do not think, I still don't think they would actually be able to achieve it. And so, as much as the SNP fanboys uh, <laughs> love, love, love to try to dogpile me on Twitter, if Scottish independence was actually achieved, if it, if it actually became a reality, then they're just voluntarily fucking themselves right up the arse. And it's, and it's all about the SNP wanting to have a claim to fame with the, with their picture in the history books next to William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and oh look, those SNP people that they got us they got us independence too. Great. Now we'll watch you sinking into the North Sea. You know, the Scottish people will not suicide themselves. Obviously, I kind of have to believe that. But at the same time, I know that if the Westminster, if they get too arrogant and if they start taking too much for granted, then there could be a backlash that would... Just the way that they thought Brexit wouldn't really happen, otherwise they would never have actually given us a referendum, then that same sort of presumptive arrogance could actually be oh well they're never going to vote for it anyway so we'll so we'll let them so we'll let them have that have another vote you know we'll, you know give them another referendum and if enough people are angry and they're assuming that everybody else is going to be sensible then they could actually i uh, declare independence by mistake that having been said, I do, I do not believe that Brexit uh, is a mistake. I, I can see that, uh, you know, there, there will be a financial hit. You know, as any, anybody who's saying otherwise is an idiot. But I think it's worth the pain now for the freedom later. Anyway, um, that's... Uh, what, what I think of the current state of the Scottish independence campaign and why I think it is now impossible for Scotland to become an independent nation. I'm Jabba and this has been my soapbox and thanks for listening. <laughs>